Hi, my name is Jochen Virich. I'm the curator of sculpture at Frederick Meyer Gardens and Sculpture Park. Uh, we are here in the sculpture galleries. Um, uh, behind me, uh, a work by uh, George Siegel uh, called Street Crossing. Uh, we just opened a uh, George Siegel exhibition uh, called Body Language, and I'm thrilled to uh, give you a, a little bit of an introduction uh, to this show. Uh, so George Siegel was born in New York to Jewish immigrants from Poland. Uh, they lived in the Bronx first and then they moved to uh, New Brunswick, uh, New Jersey area. George uh, took classes at um, New York University uh, and then uh, later uh, received his uh, Master of Fine Arts at Rutgers University. New Jersey is pretty much where he had his studio and where he worked and then he would return to New York many times and uh, observe life uh, and including scenes like uh, street crossing. Uh, so by the early 1960s um, uh, he was exhibiting in New York with artists like Andy Warhol, um, Roy Lichtenstein, Klaus Oldenburg, uh, artists, some of them are represented here at Maya Gardens in the collection. This group then became known as the Pop Artists. Um, what I find so fascinating about George Siegel is that he really um, uh, uh, kind of represents a very different side of Pop Art. Uh, as you can see, um, he observed everyday life um, and uh, he developed this very unique kind of approach to um, uh, reflecting on what he saw. He would create um, uh, essentially uh, sculptures out of uh, plaster, white, white plaster. Uh, I feel that uh, George Siegel was uh, kind of ahead of his time because if you think about how these people are crossing the street and uh, kind of, you know, um, gauging uh, the space and the distance between them and the other. Uh, I think he was very much aware of this whole issue that is uh, so, uh, so prevalent today that we're so immersed in, which is, you know, how do we navigate public space? How approximate can we be uh, to another body uh, in these, in these uh, uh, public spaces? And so I find it really fascinating that George Siegel is still so, um, uh, so current. Uh, we have organized this exhibition into several sections. I'll be talking about each section, but this we call public spaces. Uh, there's another large group in this exhibition called Bus Passengers, uh, which I urge you to see. Uh, and, uh, and then there, there are a few other sections that also show you uh, George Siegel uh, working in two-dimensional work, which is something very unique to this exhibition that we're actually um, pairing the sculptures with uh, prints. Uh, there's an oil painting, there's a pastel drawing, uh, and uh, creating this interesting uh, relationship uh, between the two-dimensional and the three-dimensional. George Siegel, throughout his career, was not only sculpting, he was experimenting with different uh, printmaking techniques. Uh, he was uh, drawing, painting, uh, and um, these different media allowed him to explore the body in different um, configurations. And so what strikes me about uh, this body of work here is that they're fragments. Um, and um, if you think about the fragment, you think you can think back to uh, ancient uh, Roman ruins and oftentimes, you know, sculpture from uh, those excavations uh, came to us as fragments. So I think that uh, George Siegel was very much aware of that. Uh, and here he puts a sort of a modern contemporary twist on that. Um, he was working with a, actually with a printmaker in Rome uh, to create these uh, aqua tints um, and he was obviously he was exploring color and value and um, the sort of um, contrast of, of, of uh, light and dark. Um, he was also, uh, as you can see behind me, working with uh, relief sculpture. Uh, again, something that goes back to uh, Roman architecture. If you think about those reliefs that you might have seen on um, uh, pediments and temple uh, fronts. And um, so again, he, uh, he creates a very dynamic type of relief. As you can see in, behind me, the, fi the figure is literally breaking out of the wall and he painted it blue too, which is something that um, 
uh, George Siegel never just uh, you know, sculpted uh, white plaster. He liked to experiment with color uh, and gave his sculptures a different kind of mood that way. So I'm here with uh, a sculpture by George Siegel called uh, Seated Woman Reading. And uh, she is part of a group of work that we um, refer to as stasis, you know, um, sculptures and lithographs where the body is more or less at rest. The body is at ease. Um, he uses chairs as props. So they are um, sculptures and lithographs showing um, the body in its probably most uh, sort of a relaxed uh, state. Um, at the same time, uh, in Seated Woman Reading, again, Siegel is also interested in what is going on in her, her mind. What, uh, what is she thinking about? Uh, so um, uh, he's always interested in this uh, tension between, um, you know, the body and the mind. Um, and uh, we're always uh, made to um, uh, sort of enter a little bit her, uh, the, the, um, um, the figure's uh, interior space. Uh, she's reading, she's reflecting. Um, with these uh, lithographs also, um, as you can see behind me, um, he, in, he um, included a little cof coffee cup. Um, and uh, so he was, um, um, he was, he had a little bit of a sense of a humor in that way, in that, uh, into this sort of, you know, sort of black and white image, he includes a, a kind of a collage element, and which is a bit of a, maybe also a bit of a, um, a nod to the pop artists who, of course, were always interested in these kinds of everyday objects. Here we are in a gallery uh, that we call People. Uh, George Siegel often used uh, family and friends as models. Um, in this gallery, you find our own uh, woman in armchair, with, which is a sculpt sculpture of a friend uh, seated. Um, and you will see uh, a pastel um, of, of Helen, his wife. It's actually called Helen Smiling. And then uh, a series of uh, aqua tins uh, that were based on pastels. So what he would do is, as you see in Helen Smiling, uh, he would use uh, black and white um, pastel. And um, he, um, uh, he was really interested in, um, again, light and dark contrast. Um, his approach to pastel was uh, very rough and uh, hatch mark-like. Um, and um, very large format, uh, so they're very, very expressive um, pastels. And then as, if you look at the aqua tints, uh, the aqua tint allowed him then to bring out further the contrast of dark and light, the chiaroscuro, uh, which is a Italian Renaissance term for you know, light and dark contrast. And um, if you look at the history of art, um, I think a good example of this type of etching is Rembrandt. Um, and um, uh, I think Siegel was very much aware of that, of that tradition in, um, in art history uh, and uh, was, again, uh, putting a kind of a modern uh, contemporary spin on that. So I'm here with red-haired girl in green robe, one of uh, George Siegel's um, silk screen uh, prints. The silk screen um, was, was a, a medium that many of the pop artists explored. You may know uh, that Andy Warhol was very prolific with uh, silk screens. Um, and um, George Siegel um, translated um, his pastels uh, sometimes into silk screens. So this would have been originally a pastel. And I think this is a good example uh, for um, George Siegel's love for color. Um, he was a painter, really, before he was a sculptor, and uh, he never abandoned his, his, his sort of his passion for, for color. So I think it's fair to say that here he really experimented with color uh, in a way that uh, he just couldn't with sculpture. This is a section uh, we call movement because um, he, uh, he was so... Um, loose in the way he uh, used the, the pastel uh, and, and used color 
that uh, these images have a sense of movement. Uh, they're very dynamic images, and I think um, just to look at her, at her hair and how the red hair just sort of flows along the entire upper tier of this of this image, um, it's just a just a very dynamic uh, uh, image, and um, you see this throughout these prints, uh, where um, you know color is a major element in um, sort of just creating flow and uh, and a sense of sequence uh, across different images that you just don't quite get from uh, from the sculptures. So. I think this image here behind me uh, kind of kind of encapsulates uh, the theme of the exhibition, body language, uh, red nude on black background. I think it's really fascinating how um, George Siegel uh, used uh, just a red, um, probably pastel, uh, uh, to uh, to create an image, and it's a kind of a disorienting image, and the body is sort of tumbling and um, floating and. Um, I think that uh, for uh, George Siegel, uh, the human body was had just endless uh, possibilities uh, for uh, representation. Color is is also something that um, he uh, he used to uh, uh, express um, uh, body language uh, in, in in multiple forms. So uh, come and visit us. Uh, we are uh, open um, to the public. Um, we uh, have a great exhibition, George Siegel Body Language. There's a sculpture by George Siegel outside in the sculpture park. So once you've seen the exhibition here in the sculpture galleries, go outside and uh, see the other work by George Siegel and see some of the other um, sculptures of the human figure that are represented in our collection. I look forward to seeing you here.